At our church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. Good morning. Welcome to Dixie Valley Church this morning. Uh, we're so glad to have you with us on this beautiful Palm Sunday. So you know what that means today. We are here together to worship the Lord and worship our Savior. And how many are you excited to do that this morning? Yes. Amen. That's why he woke us up this morning. But I want to just again say welcome. Uh, if you're a guest with us today, we'd love the opportunity to get to meet you if we haven't already. But also, uh, if you have not been given a Connect card, if you want to fill that out and after service, you can give it back uh, at the Welcome Center and they will be able to give you a gift of just saying thank you for being with us today. Uh, but we are excited to have you. Let me give you some quick announcements this morning. Um, so first of all, our Wednesday night uh, Bible study that we've been doing on Wednesday nights this month are going, is going to be canceled for this uh, coming Wednesday. That will allow everyone to be able to go to the funeral home uh, for the Holiday family. If you're not aware of that yet, Bill Holiday passed this past Friday morning. And so we want to continue to remember the Holiday family in prayer. And, uh, but the funeral arrangements will be also sent to you all uh, through our phone, uh, through your phone. And uh, we'll have it on our Facebook page. But funeral arrangements are visitations are Wednesday from 3 to 8, I believe. 3 to 8 at Pearson's Funeral Home. And then the funeral, the funeral will be Thursday at 11 o'clock here at Dixie Valley Church. So uh, we want you to know that, but we will be sending that information out to you all uh, through our phone service as well. So, uh, but we do want to keep the Holiday family in our prayers today um, during this time. I want to read this passage of scripture found in Matthew 21. And if you'll do me a favor, if you'll stand with me this morning. Our kids are anxiously awaiting to hand out palm branches to you. And if you're unaware of what the palm branches are, those is what, that, that's what were uh, waved as Jesus was coming into Jerusalem and as Jesus was making his uh, arrival uh, for what we know what was to come. And so they were worshiping and celebrating his name, and that's what we get to do. But I want to read this passage of scripture found in Matthew 21. It says, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. He's coming, church. The king is coming. Do you believe that this morning? And I want to ask you a question. What would your response be if you were able to see Jesus riding into town what would your response be if you saw Jesus walking the pews or the, the aisles of the church this morning? What kind of worship would you give him this morning? 
I would believe that we would give him the very best worship that we have with inside of us, the very best worship that we have in our hearts. And because we get to see him, but we are going to see a king again, amen. We're going to see our king, a risen king. And so today we get to come together and celebrate on this Palm Sunday. So we're going to pray. Music is going to start. The kids are going to hand out palm branches to you, and they're going to bless us with songs. And so let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today. And God, we thank you that today you are a risen Savior. God, you're no longer in the tomb. But God, on this Palm Sunday, dear Lord God. Do not let anything hinder our worship, God. Do not let anything stop us from pouring our hearts out to you this morning, dear Lord Jesus. God, I pray right now, God, that we will empty our hearts out. God, we will shout the praises. God, we will give you the worship that you as a king deserves, dear Lord. God, we glorify your holy name. Bless this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, give him a hand clap this morning. In Mark chapter 1, it says, John the Baptist prepares the way. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and I will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord's coming. Clear the road for you. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we thank you for being able to be here in your presence this morning as a family of believers, Father. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity. Let us not waste this opportunity of being together to glorify and magnify your name as we prepare the road for you, God. Lord, come and be with us, Father. Come and manifest in this room. Holy Spirit, come down right now and prepare every heart for what's about to take place in this room this morning. We believe that great things are happening in the supernatural right now, Father. We believe chains are being broken. We believe addictions are falling off. We believe wayward sons and daughters are coming back home, Father. We believe that a, a, a healing will be taking place, Father. May our hearts be prepared for you this morning as we sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Amen, amen. Are you ready to worship the king this morning? Are you worship? Are you ready to worship the king this morning? Oh, there's about four of you. Are you ready to worship the king of kings and the Lord of lords this morning? Come on, can you just give him a hand clap of praise in this room? Can we prepare ye the way of the Lord this morning? Let our hearts be ready for him this morning. 
this morning. Amen. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. Come on, let's sing it. Together we see is everyone see. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord. Stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we see Yes, everyone see Come on, let's sing this together this morning The holy is the Lord Hallelujah. 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 Aren't you glad that the evidence is still in the room this morning? Yes, 
Hallelujah. All over my life. All over my life. I see promises in fulfillment. All over my life. All over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak. Come, the fear will leave. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You lead my heart to victory. Oh, you are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All The empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin is rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin is rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. I see the cross, the empty grave. The evidence is endless. All my sin is rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Oh, yeah. I see the evidence of you. Come on, sing that out this morning. All over my life. All over my life. Promises, yes, I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Oh, I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin is rolled away because of you, oh, come on, sing that out this morning. See the cross, the empty grave, yes, the evidence is endless. All my sin is rolled away because of you, oh, Jesus, oh. I see, come on, scream it out. Promises, yes, I, I see, see the promises in fulfillment all over my life. All over my life, I see the evidence, yes, I see the evidence of your good. Hallelujah. Promises in fulfillment. 
Can we sing that again? Why should I fear the evidence is Why should I fear oh, the evidence is here? The evidence is here. The evidence is here. Why should we fear? Why should we fear? For God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of one of love, peace, and of a sound mind. So why should we fear? Why should we fear? For the evidence is all around us this morning, church.
Has he been good to you? With that palm branch in your hand, still standing or sitting, can you just raise it up and give the shoutest, uh, loudest Hosanna you possibly can? Because the King is coming. Hosanna. The King is coming. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. God, we thank you that you've been good to us, God. And God, as we look around, God, the evidence is there, dear Lord Jesus. The evidence is there just how good you've been. And God, if you haven't done anything else but send your son to save us from our wretched self, you've been just good enough. Hallelujah. God, we worship you, Jesus. God, we thank you. We glorify your holy name today. The king is coming. Can you thank him for it this morning? Amen. You may be seated. This morning, we get to celebrate a Savior on this Palm Sunday leading into Easter. And I pray that you've been inviting people to Easter with you. Even today, you've invited people with you. But we're glad to have you with us this morning. But we're going to go into our time of prayer. And we all come in here with needs this morning. How many of you have a need this morning? Amen. How many of you have come in here with it seems like the weight of the world on your shoulders this morning? Can I tell you something? The Lord knows what you're going through. He's there with you this morning. And we want to pray this morning that the presence of God, the comfort of our Savior fills the holiday family as they're navigating through this passing of Bill. As I've sat there and thought about that several times this weekend and just what he means to us, our hearts hurt. It's a, it, it, it is, it's a hard thing to believe. But I do know this today, that Bill is walking the streets of gold with a healed body in the presence of a Savior this morning. And I know one thing. Once he got a glimpse, he would never want to come back. And so, yes, we, we, we deal with it here on earth. But he is in a much better place today. But we pray for the holiday family. And we pray that God will just surround them and love on them. And give them that peace and comfort that he promised us. But we want to remember also Sister Daner. Uh, Sister Daner on Wednesday night fell and broke her hip, her femur. And yesterday, or no, I'm sorry, Friday morning or Friday afternoon, she had surgery, uh, partial hip replacement at 90 years old. And, uh, but she is doing good. Uh, Chris let me know this morning that she had a little bit of a rough night last night. But she is doing better and she's doing good. So we want to continue to remember Sister Daner and lift her up in prayer. And that God will just continue to touch her body. We want to continue to remember Sue Treadway who's with us this morning. But we want to continue to lift her up. We want to continue to lift up my dad this morning. Uh, Angie, we want to continue to lift up her as she's still recovering. And uh, we want to lift up Jean Rourke's. Uh, Jean Rourke's went in this past Tuesday to have the heart abrasions. Uh, did not end up having that done. done. Her AFib was uh, in full effect and her heart rate was like 170. They were able to shock it, get it back down. Uh, they found infection, so they're dealing with that. Uh, so she'll have the surgery later on, but we want to just pray that God will just touch her body, bring healing to her. But we know that we serve an awesome God this morning. Amen. We serve a, a God that can do all things this morning. Do you believe that this morning? And so together, I want us to go together in faith, believing with each other knowing just how great our God is and that He is able this morning. 
And so will you go with us in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today. And God, we shout Hosanna to you, the Lord Jesus. We sing praises to you today. And God, today I pray right now, God, that you will do only what you can do to Lord Jesus. God, we know that you're a healer. God, we know that you're a provider, God. We know that you're a God that can come in and mend things to Lord Jesus. Put things back together to Lord God. God, we know that you're a God of comfort to Lord, a God of peace. And God, I pray right now to Lord God, I lift up uh, the, the uh, holiday family to Lord Jesus, Pam and those boys to Lord God and those grandchildren the Lord. God, I pray right now, the Lord God, that your peace and your comfort, the Lord God, will surround them, the Lord God, that it will love on them, the Lord Jesus. God, just wrap them in your arms this morning, the Lord God. Let them feel your peace and comfort today, the Lord God. God, I pray right now, the Lord God, that you will touch Sister Daner, the Lord God. God, bring healing right now, the Lord, to her body. God, I pray right now, God, that you will just let every part of her body heal exactly the way that it's supposed to, dear Lord God. Reduce the pain, dear Lord God. Be with her, dear Lord Jesus. God, I pray right now, dear Lord, for Jean Rourke's. God, you see everything that she's gone through, dear Lord God. You've seen, dear Lord, the back and the forth to the doctors, the hospitals. But God, right now, dear Lord God, I know that you're a healer, dear Lord God. I know that you can take AFib, dear Lord, and you can speak to the heart, and you can tell it to beat exactly the way that it's supposed to, dear Lord God. Bring healing to her body, dear Lord. Heal this infection right now, dear Lord God. God, let her feel your presence today, dear Lord God. God, I pray for Sue and my dad, the Lord God, continue to bring healing to their body, the Lord Jesus, the Lord. God, I pray for Angie, the Lord God, that you will just continue to touch her, the Lord God. Bring healing. God, let the nerves line up exactly the way they're supposed to, the Lord. God, we thank you, the Lord, for what you're doing. And God, every, every, every need that is represented in this house, the Lord God, do it right now, the Lord, whatever you have to do. God, move amongst your people, the Lord. And God, just as we saw, the evidence of who you are, the Lord, of how good you are, is all around us. And God, just let us see that today one more time. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward as they're coming forward and you're preparing your tithes and your offerings. I want to just say thank you for all that you do. You don't do it for Dixie Valley. You do it for the kingdom of God. And I thank you for that. And I just ask that you will just continue to be faithful. And that you will just continue to support the kingdom this morning. But let us go to the time in prayer and offering over this offering. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today. And God, I just ask right now, God, that you will just move in this house. And God, in this time of giving, dear Lord God, God, I pray as they're preparing their tithes and their offerings, whether they're dropping it in the plate or giving it online, dear Lord, however they do it. God, I just ask right now, God, that you will bless them. God, bless their homes and their families, dear Lord Jesus. God, I ask right now, God, that you will just pour out into their lives, dear Lord Jesus. God, bless their families today. And God, I ask that you will use this to reach the hurting and the lost. God, I pray right now, God, as this goes forward, God, that you will just bring increase to your house, to Lord God. God, I'm not asking for increase, but God, I'm asking for increase in souls, to Lord God. We want to see the loss coming to you, to Lord God. And God, use it, to Lord, to do that, to Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. God, we give you all the glory and the honor. In your name we pray, amen. Up with more of you this morning, God. 
Show us your glory, God. Show us your glory, God. Come on, can we just lift him up in this place right now? Come on, lift your voice up across this room. Come on, just praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords this morning. Just cry out, show us your glory, God. Show us what you want from us this morning, God. Lord, we pour ourselves out for you this morning that you may enter in, God, and fill us with more of you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Show us your glory, Jesus. therapist that was there that was giving her testimony. We hear about this a lot overseas. You know about this, you were here, but I want to tell you this, it, it encouraged me so much because there are dead things in our life that he wants to raise up today. 
she was a respiratory therapist and she had 12 patients that day and she had one patient that had been in a motor vehicle accident he was brain dead he was only 20 years old and the next day they were going to pull him off of life support and the lord kept telling her go in and pray healing over him and she was so worried and she was so bound up in her fear she was afraid to go in there and she kept scrolling on her phone and kept looking over her phone trying to figure out how to get past this but the lord kept telling her go in there and speak healing and she said i don't even know how to do that but she went in there and all she did was bring back the word of god and she said god i know you did it for lazarus god i know you did it for jafar's daughter god i know that you did it in everyone's life and god i'm asking you today to heal him she said there was no big bells or whistles that so she walked out the door and as she got halfway down the hallway she heard all the bells and all the, the alarms start going off and she ran back in his room and she found him pulled over on the side of the bed trying to take the trach out I'm telling you God is in the miracle working business he knows exactly what has been done in your life and he wants to speak life there is change to be given to you this morning and all he asks is that you have the faith to speak it and God I know you can break these chains I know that the dead things can come back to life this morning can we sing that one more time and declare it over the situations in our life this morning it's fear has to go yes Jesus he changes everything this morning chains fall that one more time. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Let every burning heart be holy ground. Because you are the maker, miracle, miracle word, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Sing that this morning. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who Good morning, you. 
Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. Worship you. able to come and pick up your communion cup, find you a place to kneel this morning or to sit, whichever is comfortable. Don't open up your cup, just make sure you have it so that when you go back to your seat, if you aren't able to come, we'll make sure that you get a cup, okay? But if you're physically able, I'm going to expect you on Palm Sunday to be up here Standing, sitting, doing something, thanking God for what he's done for you. 
Amen. Amen. He is here. Touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Healing every heart. Every heart. I worship you. I worship you. One more time. Do I do it? Do it, do it again. You are here. Do you believe here? Touching said if just two or three would gather in your name and I'm sure this morning there's at least two or three here that that are in agreement God with the name of Jesus and we've been worshiping and waving palm branches today and we're so grateful that on this Palm Sunday that starts this holy week that we can start it worshiping we know at the end of the week Lord your son will be crucified but not for no cause at all but for me for my sins and my iniquities he willingly took my place and redeemed my life from the sins and the bondage oh God and set me free and I just pray this morning Father that this word that you have placed in my heart will be a, by the Holy Spirit a word that will be placed in the hearts of those that have ears to hear. God, at the end of this service today, God, is we will conclude with, with taking this wonderful supper that you instituted this coming Thursday during the Holy Week, that it will be the meal that heals us, that heals us spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Father, we pray for that today that we won't leave like we came. We won't carry home the burdens and the heartaches and the hang-ups and whatever else we brought with us. We'll take our burdens to you, Lord. And we'll leave them there. And we're going to trust you. And even though we have to wrestle with doubt sometimes, we're still going to trust you that even in the midst of our struggling, even with doubt, that you'll deliver us and set us free. We believe all that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to look at Mark chapter 11. We could look at a different chapter in the gospel, but I chose to go to Mark chapter 11 this morning to talk about this Palm Sunday. It says, Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go over in the village opposite you, and as soon as you enter, if, if it, excuse me, as soon as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one, which no one has ever set. Loose it, bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you? Loosing this, say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will, he will need, and immediately he will send it. I, that light is really neat. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside the street. Matthew says it's like at a crossroads, and they loosed it. But some of those that stood there said to them, What are you doing, loosing this colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus and 
to their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes onto the road, and others cut down leafy or palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And then those who went before those who followed cried out, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went back to Bethany with the twelve. How do you preach up here? If you read Matthew's gospel and you read the story, it will say, And this was done that the words of the prophet would be fulfilled. In fact, if you'll read Matthew's gospel over and over again, you'll find those similar words. It said, and Jesus, this was done, or this was said, so that the Old Testament that prophesied that the Messiah was coming would be fulfilled. And so it was that when they went and got the colt, and they brought it, and Jesus got on it and started riding into town and crying, Hosanna, they fulfill what Zechariah had said, here comes the Messiah, here comes the king riding on this colt or this donkey. Now, you know, the first thing that amazes me about this story is that Jesus is about to die. The scripture says he has set his face like flint to go to Jerusalem. He, he knew what was going to happen. He, knew, he didn't know every fact or uh, all the stuff that he would suffer, but he knew that the end of this journey would be the end of his life. <laughs> and on that day, as they're going into Jerusalem, he says to his disciples, over there in that other village, there is a colt that's tied up, I want you to go and loosen it. Now, man, if I was about to die, I don't think I'd be thinking about a colt. I don't think I'd be thinking about anything else. But see, here's the thing. Jesus knew the fulfillment of the Word of God was coming to pass, and so Jesus, at that moment, revealed his deity. Because you know what we say about God? He's all-knowing and all-present and all-powerful. <laughs> the disciples may have not known there was a, a colt tied up over there, but he knew there was a colt over there, and he knew it was tied up at the crossroads, and he knew that he needed it. And you know what that told me this morning? It tells me Jesus knows who you are and where you are and what you are going through this morning when you think nobody else knows. He knows. But not only does he know, but he cares about you and what you're going through. Sometimes I look at my life and some of the things I deal with and I think these things are so trivial to me. But do you understand as a child of God this morning that nothing is trivial with God that is trivial that you think is trivial? I, used, I remember when I was in the military and I was stationed in France and one day this, one of my roommates said to me, Brother Larry, how in the world are you able to do what you do and to undergo or stand what you stand? And I said, I just, I just take my burdens to the Lord and I leave them there. And you know what they said to me, Al? They said, don't you think you trouble God too much? Don't you think you ought to try to handle some things for yourself? And isn't that the trick of the devil? He wants you to try to handle what God wants to take off of your shoulders and the burdens of your life. He wants you to know that he knows and he cares what's going on with you. And so he says to the disciples, there's a colt over there. It's standing tied up. 
and I want you to know that I need it, and I want you to go loosen it. I thought about two things. Number one, do you know sometimes as a Christian God ties you up? <laughs> you think nothing's going on in my life. Nothing's happening. Could it be God's just got you tied up for a few minutes until he wants to untie you? See, that colt had been tied up over there how long? I don't know. Nobody's ever ridden on that colt. I don't know why, but I do know one thing. At the right time and the right place, he said, go untie that colt and bring it to me because I have need of it. You, you know the story. She, you, who knows? You were brought to the kingdom for such an hour as this. And I'm thinking about this world in which I live. And sometimes at my age, you know, as you get older, uh, as some of those older preachers get set on the shelf and they think, well, nobody cares anymore. But, you know, I thought the other day as I was writing this sermon, I was thinking, maybe God's just got me tied up right here for a while because he hasn't got the right time or the right place to untie me. What I'm trying to tell some people here this morning is don't be frustrated because ain't nothing going on right now. Don't get frustrated, Pastor Stephen, because we ain't see. I'm going to use ain't all day, ain't I? I ain't seeing what we want to see because maybe right now we're tied up exactly where God wants us to be, that we're at the right place and the right time, and all we've got to do is wait on God's timing to say, go and let them loose. Go and set them free and bring them to me. Now, the question is, are you willing for the Lord to untie you? Are you willing to be untied? Because it's no good if I'm tied up and I'm not willing to follow the direction of the Lord why would he want to unloose me anyway? Now, you know, you can, when you're tied up, you can move a little bit, but you aren't, you're not totally free. And I thought this morning, Lord, I thank you that right now, if I can just be patient, if I can just wait on you, Lord, that this is going to work out, that I am your son or I'm your daughter, and all this stuff that I can't figure out and why I'm here, but I'm just going to wait on you to say, I'm going to come and untie you. And could it be this week, could it be that on this holy week, God's going to untie us as Christians because he's brought us to the kingdom for such an hour as this? That he's going to loose, that he's going to send a spirit of revival and a fire that's going to be shut up in our bones like Jeremiah said. And he's going to get ready to loose us in a world that needs a light and needs the salt. I, I don't know about you this morning, but when I was working on this sermon, I said, Lord, come and untie me and turn me loose and let me go do your plan and purpose. Because remember, he's got you tied up because he's got, a he's got thoughts that are are good and a plan for you so don't worry he's coming your way and you're going to be set free to do the will of God hallelujah but you know some of us are tied up in sin it's not that we've been tied up and the Lord just got to serve for a plan and a purpose some of us are so tied up with our habits and hang-ups and hurts. Some of us have got guilt and condemnation weighting us down. and We, we want to be free and we've tried to be free and we've done everything that we know to be free. We stand at the crossroads and tied up there and and again, we're able to, we'll move this way and, and feel pretty good for a while. And then we can move over here, but, but we never get free because wherever we go, that habit is hanging on me and that addiction is there and 
that problem that I need to get rid of just won't, won't leave me alone. And, and the weight and the burden and the guilt, my goodness, how heavy this burden of sin I have. But don't you know this morning... Don't you really know that God doesn't want you bound? That, that on this coming Easter when he re resurrected from the grave, don't you know that the Bible said the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that wants to loose you and set you free from that habit? Don't you know that whatever that may be, whether it's a drug or an addiction of alcohol or an addiction to pornography, or, uh, or permissive sex or whatever is going on in your life. Don't you know this morning that God does not... Man, I'm going to be preaching, ain't it? Well, I am preaching a long time. So he, he doesn't want you bound. He doesn't want you tied up. And God says, I know there's a cult over there. There's a person over there this morning. One of them's a Christian, and I just had them tied up for my plan and purpose. But there's that sinner that I love so much, that, that person that thinks nobody cares, that person that thinks they've gone too far, that person that thinks they can never turn around, that person that says they can't ever get free, I just want them to know this morning that I know that you're there and I know what's got you tied up, but I'm sending the Holy Spirit this morning I'm sending the Holy Spirit to untie you, to loose you, and set you free. So the first thing I want to draw to our attention is, if you're tied up, let him untie you. Whether you're a saint or a sinner, let him untie you and set you free. Because listen to me, if you're tied up with habits and you've tried so hard, and you haven't been able to do it, the man that hung on that tree, well, not that one, but the one that hung on the cross, and bled and died, went into a tomb and is going to be resurrected, is the one that loves you so much and cares about you so much. And listen carefully. I'm going to give an altar call this morning. And these cups up here, they represent that body that was broken. They represent that blood that was shed. And you say, Brother Larry, I'm just so unworthy. Well, who is worthy? None of us are worthy. I, I'm not going to pick up that cup because I'm worthy. I'm going to pick up that cup because of his grace and his mercy and his desire to loose me and set me free. And I'm not going to let the devil send me out of here bound. I don't care whether I'm a saint or a Christian. I'm going to get that element and I'm going to let it set me free and loose me this morning. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. It ain't going to do any good to be untied if you're not willing to be led. I don't know much, Scott, but I would perchance to think that that colt has been tied up there and nobody's ever ridden it, and nobody's, and, and, and you turn that thing loose, what would it do? It'd run wild. It'd buck, run wild, do everything it wanted to do, don't you think? But, but they didn't just turn it loose. They led that. They led that cult to Jesus. And that's the question. Are you willing to be led by the Holy Spirit? I, I'm not, I, you've been led by the Spirit. No, no. But the wrong Spirit, maybe. But do, are you ready to be led by the Holy Spirit? Listen to me, saints and sinners alike. Don't you understand that the Bible says if you'll be led by the Spirit, you won't be doing that old stuff that keeps you into shame and bondage. It won't keep you in your past. It'll take you to, it brought that cold from its past to its future, hallelujah, because to be loosed and not be led is not what God desires for you and I today. Day, and that's why he sends his Holy Spirit. And I'm praying as the preacher, 
I'm praying as a Christian, God, please don't stop leading me. God, when you saved me and I, and I gave my heart to you, where you led, I would follow. I was willing to go where you want me to go and do what you want me to do. But I hate to tell you, Lord, that sometimes I've got so comfortable being a Christian and, and I've been looking at everything being so convenient for me. But, Lord, when you loosed me those years ago and you led me, you led me to do this for you and you led me to be involved here in the kingdom for you. And somewhere along the line, dear God, I, I, I stopped being led. Now, I, 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 don't, I don't go into sin and, and I don't go into rebellion, but, but, Lord, my comfort zone, and my convenience is far more important than my commitment. But this morning, Lord, I don't just want you to come by on this holy week and, and say, say, Larry, I'm going to set you free, and, and I want to, but I want you to lead me, Jesus. And dear sinner, he's going to lead you away from your company. He'll, he'll lead you away from that old crowd. He'll lead you away from those areas of temptation. And he'll lead you into his presence. And that's what you have to remember this morning. They weren't just leading this cult anywhere. They were leading this cult to Jesus. They were bringing this cult to do the plan and purpose of God. And isn't that what you want for your life? Because you, you know what? Stephen's preached it to us. Satan has a what? A plot. And God has one. And Satan's been plotting all the time how to destroy me, how to trip me up, how to get me off the path, how to get me back into bondage, how many to say it doesn't matter, that I'm a mature Christian and I can handle this stuff and all that junk that he would give me to bring me back to being tied up. I don't want to be tied up. I want to be loose, but I want to be led by the Spirit because it will lead me in the right path for his name's sake. It will lead me in the straight and the narrow way, not the broad road of destruction. Because remember, the way of the destruction, you'll never find it till you get to the end. There's no big signs up here saying, this will take you to eternal life and this will take you to damnation. Oh no, it just says this one's straight and this one's broad and you got to choose. The sad part is when you get to the end, because there is a way that seems right. But so this morning, I don't want, I don't want on this holy week to be untied, but I want him to lead me. And let me tell you something, dear sinner. And I don't say that in any derogatory way. Because a saint is a sinner saved by grace anyway. But if you'll let him, as saint or sinner, he'll lead you here. Because here we find the presence of God. When you, you go to the Old Testament, what did they do? They went to the altar to find the presence of God. And, and you know through the years, and I don't know how we, we broke the habit, but we used to have a habit. This is where we always ended up, right? Give me an amen. We always ended up. We'd always be praying. I, I remember when I first got saved, I used to sit on the front seat after I got saved. And the reason is because I didn't want to walk down the aisle. I didn't want to have everybody to see me. So if I was on the front seat, I just got up and went, and I didn't worry about who was behind me, right? And sometimes I had to stay longer than other people. But when I got up from that place, I had been in his presence. I had been set free from my burdens and sin. I was being led by the Spirit, and I could go out in the abundant life that Jesus had promised. And isn't that what you want this morning, to go out? in the abundant life that Jesus has for each and every one of us. So this morning, your life may seem to be a mess, and you just may seem to be so frustrated and, 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 and discouraged and worried and whatever other adjective that you want to put in there, but I've got some news for you. 
you'll let him loose you from, he'll take you to whatever you've been in. He, he didn't just reach down into Egypt and say, I'm going to take my people out of this bondage and out of this slavery. That's not what he said. He said, I bore you up on eagle's wings and I brought you to myself so that I could bear you up to take you to this promised land. And he promises to deliver you from that so you can be free over here. That what you thought was pleasure for only a season now becomes joy unspeakable and full of God's glory. From the old to the new, and it's a great life because this, this, there's a colt over there and it's tied up at a crossroad. It's decision time. Please go get it and bring it to me. And sure enough, Sure enough, it happened, right? What do you think you're doing? Isn't that what that crowd said? What do you think you're doing untying this colt? It's not yours. And you better believe it this morning that if you decide to be untied and led by the Spirit, you're going to have friends and family and the world and the devil saying, what do you think you're doing? Don't you know if you if you walk to that that altar and and you give your heart to the don't you don't you know don't you don't you know what you're about to lose and and let me tell you you're about to lose all of this junk so that you can have all of these riches that's all that's going to happen but see when you want to get free there's going to be somebody that's going to try to hinder you from making it. Well, I can even tell you this morning when Brother Larry finishes his sermon and he says it's time to stand and the music plays and I ask you to come to this altar, the devil's going to be there saying, what do you think you're doing? What do you, what do you think? Stephen, how many times have you given all to call recently and said, you want to get out of that shame and that mess? Come on up. Don't you know the devil says, you don't want to do that. What do you think you're doing? You don't want to make that decision today. Just put it off. You don't want to put that off any longer. You put it off long enough and today, whether you're young or you're old. And I thought as I was writing this sermon, I once was young. I was 36 years old the first time you heard me preach. And now here I am, 80 years old, preaching for you on this Sunday morning. But from 36 to 80, I've never seen him the righteous forsaken. I've never seen him let me down. When I made that decision as a teenager so many years ago, I never wanted to turn back to what I had because it was a mess. But oh, what blessings there's been. Oh, there's been ups and downs and there's been temptations and trials. But my Lord, I want you to know this morning, if you'll be untied and set free and led by the Spirit, and, and when other people are telling you, don't you make that kind of commitment, you go ahead and do it and the Lord will make good use of you and bring glory to him through your life. Now, you know what happens next, right? This colt that's never been ridden, right? So if you untie that and you try to get on its back, isn't it amazing when they brought that colt and put their clothes on it, and Jesus just sat on that, how submissive that colt was. No more rebellion, no bucking, none of that stuff that that animal would have naturally done. But when Jesus sat on that colt, when G that animal knew that he was being controlled by another spirit, he just submitted. Are you willing to submit? That, I guess that's a good question, isn't it? And I thought, okay, I'm untied. I'm loose now and I'm led. People have tried to keep me from doing it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And Jesus is going to sit on me. No, he's gone to heaven. Do you remember when Jesus went to heaven? He told those disciples. He says, you're going to go out and face the world, and you're going to have battles to fight, but don't you leave that upper room. 
So they go to this upper room, and the Bible says that there was this sound of a rushing mighty wind, and there were cloven tongues like as a fire. And you want to finish it for me? And it set on every one of them. And it set on every one of them. And Roy, I thought this morning, I, you know, I know Jesus is not going to come by and physically set on me. But when temptation comes and, I, I, and I'm starting to go astray, Holy Spirit, set on me. When, when pride tries to rise up in my life and take the glory away from God, Holy Spirit, set on me. Because I don't want to just be loosed and set free to do my thing. I want to be loose so the Spirit can sit on me so that when temptation arises and trouble arises and this old flesh would lead me down the wrong path and I am so weak in the flesh that I can't overcome, Holy Spirit sit on me this morning. Isn't that about time that some of us, we remember those good old days when we would pray through and the Spirit would sit on us and we'd get up in great power. Come on, somebody say amen. And we'd get up and we'd say, oh, what a change Jesus has made. What a change. And so I'm saying to you this morning, if you come to this altar today and, and, and you start living for Jesus, it won't be easy. But when you're tempted to go astray, just say, Holy Spirit, sit on me. Because if the Spirit leads me, I won't do the things of the flesh, right? That's what the book says. I will not do the things of the flesh. And so this morning, as Christians, if, we, if we're trying to kind of get proud, I, I've been saved so long, and, and I'm so blessed, and I have so much, and, and I am so good. And, and that, if everybody's like me, what a great world this would be. You need the Holy Ghost to sit on you real hard this morning and bring back the humility that we found when we bowed at his feet and we waved our palm branches and said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm willing to be loosed and set free and I want the Holy Spirit to sit on me. How about you? So what is your temptation this morning? What is the difficulty that uh, you're going through? And are you willing to be like that donkey? You're willing to be obedient to the leading of whatever God wants. Music people are coming and and I'm I'm you know, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read to you. And what I'm gonna read to you is this. I will follow you, dear Lord. I will follow you wherever thou goest, dear Lord, I'll go. I will follow you. I'll fo follow you is my desire. Through the, through the cold and through the fire. When you lead me through the pasture and when you lead me through the valley, I will follow you. On the mountain near you, I will follow. And I wondered this morning, is that, is that your desire to follow him? Because I said, Pastor Stephen, if it's okay, I'd like this morning for us to make a recommitment to follow. I don't know where it's going to lead. And I don't know what I may have to do. But whether thou Go with dear Lord. And you know what the other song I like is? If none go with me, yet I will follow. This morning, if the Holy Spirit's dealing with you and you feel led to come, if nobody else comes with you, it doesn't make any difference. Because the Holy Spirit's the one that's right by your side that's going to take your hand and bring you down here and be with you so that you'll never be le left alone in the future. And so this morning, follow him. Follow him. 
So are you ready to be loosed? As a Christian, are we ready to be loosed from convenience and comfort to, to recommitment? As, as a sinner, am I willing to be released from my sin and shame? Am I willing to be led by the Spirit? And am I willing to let him set on me that when this old flesh rises up, so as you close your eyes and bow your head, and what are we singing? Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I will follow him with him. If you physically can stand, go ahead. Just stand up. Stand up with me. Make this easy, will you? Make it easy. Keep singing. Where he leads me, leads me I will follow. Come with me, Stephen. Come with me. I'll go. Sit on a seat. You can kneel. You can even go back to your seat if you want to, but come and get your cup with him. Lord, we're following you. Untie us this morning, Lord, from our sin. Untie us, Lord, for your plan and purpose. Hallelujah. Somewhere, just bow your head and sit somewhere just for, the, for the next few minutes. Go ahead, start praying. Tell him, I'll follow you. All Father, you see as we're coming to be loosed and set free. Hallelujah. Kneel at the altar if you want to. Sit on the seat. But you got to pray now. Just bow your head and pray. You can pray at your seat. Father, I thank you this morning that on this, on this holy week, Lord, at the beginning of the week, that you knew there was a colt over there tied up, and that could be me, God. 
You may have tied me up for a purpose, but I, I want to find that purpose in my last days, God, to be at your will, Lord. That's what I want to be. And God, if I'm here and sin's in my life, I want to be set free from the sin. And I know I can't do it myself, but I know that you'll set me free, Jesus. I want you to set me free, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, be Pentecostal and pray out loud, will you? Some of you pray out loud with me. Father, please help us this morning as a congregation. God, I am I'm joining Pastor Stephen as, as a member of this congregation. And Lord, we're ready for you to untie us for our future. God, we've been waiting for you to come by and say, all right, you brought us to the kingdom at the right time and the right place at this hour for this church, God. And we all know, Lord, the best days are ahead because you're going to pour out your spirit. And so we thank you this morning, God, on this first day, this Hosanna day, this Hosanna that comes in the name of the Lord day. Lord, that you're going to untie us and set us free and, and we're going to go in liberty and power in this abundant life. God, I pray for those that may be here at this altar or sitting in the sanctuary that are bound by sin that you will set them free, Lord, that you will set them free from their sin and, and the shame that they've had and, and let them be loosed and set free. God, you know the burdens we bear. And God, as I'm walking around this morning, I think about I think about Louie this morning and the burden and that Jan and the family had. But, Lord, it's time to untie this situation and, and lead it in the right direction, God. It's, it's time for you to lead and lead our children and our grandchildren, God, and, and help us to be a, a bright and shining light in this hour. God, you brought us to the kingdom for such an hour as this. And God, many times we have needed to come and recommit to you. There are some of us sitting or standing this morning that need to recommit ourselves to you, Lord, and the purpose of the kingdom. We've been going through the motions, but we really haven't been doing the ministry that you've called us. So loose us from this old comfort the flesh of ours and bring us back into the Holy Spirit and, and sit on us, Holy Spirit. Just like you sat on them in the upper room, sit on us, Holy Spirit, to do your will and to do your plan. We just thank you this morning that we have this privilege and this honor. And please help us today to know that when we break this bread together and we drink this cup together, that it is that meal that heals us that it will heal us from and take away all of our sin. It'll take away all of our fears. And God, it will give us the, the blessings rather than a burden this morning. So I thank you for this privilege that we have to celebrate. Because you went through this week, and then on that, on that Thursday, you washed those disciples' feet and taught us how to be a good servant. And then you took that bread and you took that cup and you said, and this is my body broken. I'm, I'm willing to pay the price for you. And this is the covenant that I promise that I'll fulfill in your life. So when we eat it and drink it, we do this to remember the great things that you've done for us. And please help us, Father. Please help us. This. Please help us. Please help us. Holy Spirit, oh, help me out. Oh. Will we sing the cross before me? In a minute. The cross before me. All right, go ahead. The world behind me. I will follow. I will follow. The cross before me.
go ahead and have a cup. Anybody that doesn't have a cup, I got somebody that'll bring it to you. All right. about a body as you hold that piece of bread in your hand that represents the body and I want you to just take a moment to think about what that body had to endure what that body had to go through how it was broken and beaten and he did it all because he loved us took our sin and went through what he had to go through because he loves us and it was a body that was broken so this morning as we take communion together the broken as we break away for some times but it was a body that was broken and he would do it all over again because he loves you. So this morning, just as the Lord said, every time you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Can we do that this morning?
Father, God, we come to you today, and God, we thank you for the word. God, we thank you that you've come to lead us, God. God, you've come to lead us into a promise that you have over our lives, God, and we thank you for that today. And God, I thank you, dear Lord, for what you've done in the lives of your, your people today. And God, I thank you as we've taken communion together for what you've done for us. So undeserving. We'll never be worthy of it. Deserving of it. But all because you loved us. You gave your son to be broken, to die upon a cross. God as we're going to celebrate next Sunday that's not where it ended in a tomb but God a resurrection a resurrection took place and God I pray that this week as we go through this week God resurrect in us to this week I let your spirit sit upon us to Lord God, don't let us lose focus of what you've done for us and how you've led us. God, give us an opportunity to look around and look at the evidence around us of how good you are. And God, I pray if there's anyone in here, God, that may be still questioning, God, I pray that you grab a hold of their heart let them know just how much you love them today. God, I pray that this week you will give each one of us an opportunity to invite someone to be with us next Sunday. But not just to invite, but God, let them accept the invitation. And God, that they can come and hear the story of grace and mercy that can transform anybody's life because God you change everything we thank you we thank you for your word today and what you've done in this house in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen amen thank you for being here this morning thank you brother Larry for delivering the work and we let him know how much we appreciate him look for the opportunity don't wait for the opportunity to come to you to invite somebody look for an opportunity to invite somebody to come to church with you this coming Sunday it's going to be an illustrated sermon uh, we've got something to put into somebody's everybody's hands to remind them of what God has done for them and so uh, we want you to come be with us next Sunday but bring people with you Bring people in here that need to know the gospel and to know the grace and the mercy that Jesus Christ has. God bless you. Uh, look, we will be sending that information out as far as funeral uh, information. Uh, we'll be sending that out uh, tonight uh, so uh, just so that you'll